Hey everybody, welcome back to Kiki Loves Nigeria. On this episode of Kiki Loves Nigeria, we're going to continue examining Danita's journey, trying to figure out what happened, what caused her death, and where did things all go left? Because Miss Danita documented her journey on social media, there was a lot of raw footage that I had to go through. She had videos, she has uh, pictures, she has um, like comments and messages that you could go through and read. So I was going through those and reading all those, trying to put this story together, trying to retrace her steps, just trying to figure out what happened. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a series of videos and a series of pictures of our first journey to Nigeria in 2020. So in this video, I'm about to show you, this is her first time, she says, going to meet her husband in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, this is her getting off the plane in Benin City in Edo State. So let's watch this video clip. So I just got to Benin and um, I'm about to go meet my husband for the first time. I'm super nervous and excited and I wish I'd hurry up and get off this plane. And uh, there goes nothing y'all. I'm excited though. I'm really excited. So here we go. I'm excited. So what stands out to me in this video clip was that she was saying that this was her first time going to meet her husband. And what I was confused about is that she's calling him her husband, but she's never met him in person. She met him through one of her friends, a lady named Linda. Now this is something I would advise you to never do. Never ever marry anyone until you meet that person in person, to you see if you vibe with that person in person. Never let anyone pressure you into marrying them over the phone. Now, I'm not saying that Miss Danita married this man over the phone because I don't know. But what I do know is that there are some women who do meet Africans and they marry them over the phone. Yes, they do. So I do know, have, I have seen this happen. I've witnessed with my own eyes. So this is something that does really occur. Okay, so please don't ever do that. That's That was one red flag to me. So let's continue and let's look at some photos that Miss Danita shared with us of her wedding when she went to Nigeria in 2020. Her wedding was October the 10th, 2020. So let's look at pictures. So for the purpose of privacy, we're going to blur his face and we're going to change his name. I'm just going to call him that man. So, pretty nice couple, huh? Look like they had a great time, right? Looks like they had a traditional wedding. She has her Edo dress on, her Edo beads, everything, her red beads, everything. They look beautiful, right? But one thing that I noticed was when she went to go meet the family. Now, what I notice about this is the way she's dressed. Now, if this is the United States, there's nothing wrong with that. She just has on shorts and a little t-shirt, right? But in Nigeria and West Africa, you don't dress like that to go meet anyone's family, especially your fiance's family. 
So my mind is kind of confused as to why he would let her dress like this to go see his family when he know how conservative African families are, especially Nigerians. I'm not going to even say Nigerians, just African families in general are extremely conservative. So every time I went to go meet the family, they usually pick out what you wear. I'm serious. They usually help you pick out your outfit because they don't want you to be misjudged by what you have on. So I'm just a little confused as to why he would let her wear something like this to go meet his family. Now, I want to get this clear. I'm not judging Miss Danita by how she's dressed because this is just how we dress here. So again, there's nothing wrong with dressing like this if you're in the United States. But in conservative West Africa, these type of outfits are considered revealing. And I don't know, I've never met any African man who would take a woman to meet his family and even out in public dress like this. They would, they would really insist that you wear something else. So I'm kind of shocked that not only did he take her to meet his family dressed like this, he also went out in public, he let her go out in public dressed like this. And these aren't things that you would know. Your partner has to tell you these things. So let me give you a real quick example of what I'm talking about. So one time when I was in Nigeria, I wanted to go to Fela Kute Shrine, the new African shrine, which is located in Ikeja City, okay? So I had put on this really cute black and yellow outfit, and I was going to wear that to the new African shrine. Well, when uh, my ex came back home and we were getting ready to go, he was like, oh, no, you can't wear that. And I'm like, why? What's wrong with it? You know, I like my little outfit. He was like, because it's black and gold. And he said, and there's a big cult here, and that's their colors, black and gold, and they're called Black Axe. And you're not a member of Black Axe. So if you wear black and gold, they're going to assume you're a member of Black Axe, or they're going to wonder why you have on their colors. So you cannot wear that outfit. You have to wear something else. So I was like, oh my goodness, because I had heard about Black Axe. And I was like, yeah, he's right. Their colors are black and gold. But I didn't even think about that until he said it. So if someone from that culture doesn't teach you the cultural and social norms, you're not going to know. And poor Miss Danita had no clue that this is not how women dress in West Africa. If you're not, if you don't believe me, or even if you think, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, just look how African men dress when they're with their wives or their girlfriends. Notice how they dress when they're with the women that they truly care about. And notice how he's dressed, notice how he, she's dressed. And you. So the next time we see Miss Danita, she is on uh, some type of public transportation in, I believe, Lego State, and she is going to Imo State, Emo State, to meet her in-laws. And she's having some type of disagreement with one of the ladies in Legos on the bus about the seating arrangements. So here you go. We're going to listen to this video, and this is going to give us some type of uh, clue to her state of mind you know, to her mental state, to what she's going through. All right, so let's listen to this real quick, and then we're gonna come back and talk about what we see. Here. On this bus, getting ready to go to visit his mother, and there's this Nigerian woman on here who's throwing an entire fit because I'm a black American, quote unquote, sitting in her seat that I paid for. And uh, ready to go to visit his mother, and there's this Nigerian woman on here who's throwing an entire fit because I'm a black American, quote unquote, sitting in her seat that I paid for. And, uh... The thing that I noticed right here in that clip is that Miss Danita seems really drained and really tired at this point 
of the whole cultural systems in Nigeria. Just in West Africa, period. You know, they can be draining if you're not used to the way things go. She thinks this lady is upset because she's a black American sitting in her seat when that is not the case. The case is, my apologies, let me say in my opinion, because I was not there, but having traveled to Nigeria six times, in my opinion, this is what was occurring. This was the background that the lady doesn't know. The driver probably sold that seat to her and to the lady. Because see, they want to make as much money as they can. So what they'll do is they'll over the overbook, I guess that's what you call it. They'll charge two people for the same seat. They'll basically sell the same seat twice. All right. So that's what I think really happened here was that the driver, he sold that seat twice so he could get double the money, overbook the bus. So people are sitting, two people will have to sit in the same seat. And that's what the lady was upset about. But Danita didn't understand that because she's not from there. And she, because that's what she is, is a black American. You know, or she was saying American. She was just describing the lady. So Miss Danita probably took it as if she was offended. You know, because she was an American. But these are background things that you won't know, again, unless somebody from that culture tells you. Because I'm sure they were speaking pidgin and not regular North American English, because nobody there speaks North American English. They speak British English. So, either they, and I know they weren't speaking British English, they were speaking pidgin. So, she probably couldn't understand what they were saying and what was going on but this is what they do in nigeria this is just the norm to like the airlines do to charge twice two people for the same seat all right so again she sounds like she's getting frustrated because she really does not understand the cultural systems and the norms in nigeria or in west africa all right, so the next time we're going to see Miss Danita, she's going to be in emo state and she describes them as, you know, they're just being tired and they're just trying to rest up because they're going to meet her mother-in-law. Okay, now here we have Miss Danita. She has made it to emo state. Emo state is in Nigeria. It's one of the states of Nigeria. She's in Nigeria. Oh, and it's also the home. Well, it used to be the home of Nollywood movies. And a lot of the Nollywood stars actually live there. So it's a big Evo population there also. So she's finally made it. She, I think she says she's in Oweri State, Oweri, which is a city or a village there, but it's pretty big. So now she's there. She's in the, at the market. So let's check out and see what she's saying and how she's feeling now that she's got a little settled and she's in his one of his hometowns. So cool. So I am in the car right now waiting for hubby to get back from buying vegetables and stuff at the market but I just think it's so cool just looking around all these different vendors and the different stuff that they sell. It's just so cool out here man. You know these guys right here who are I believe those are lemons or oranges, but they just sit there and they just, they um, peel them. And I just think this is such a cool atmosphere, man. Yeah, you see the people out here in the streets selling things. You hear the motorcycles going a mile a minute. This is a Sunday, y'all. This is Sunday. This is not Saturday. You know, this is just how they hustle out here. It's the grind. It's cool. So I'm, what stands cool. out to me in to be this video clip is that again, she's referring to this man as her husband, yet the wedding does not take place, according to the video record, until October the 10th, 2020. This may have been just the official wedding. They may have had some small traditional wedding that we don't know about, but according to Miss Danita's 
video footprint, her electronic footprint, this wedding did not take place until October the 10th. But she's referring to this man as her husband way back in August. Another thing that, you know, stands out to me in this video is she sounds more relaxed now than in the last video. She sounds like she's getting into the vibe of Nigeria. It sounds like she's enjoying Nigeria. It sounds like she's really, you know, relaxed. She's getting settled in emo state. Emo state, if you guys don't know, is the home of Nollywood movies. Well, it used to be old Nollywood. All right. A lot of the Nollywood stars live there. All right, y'all, so let's go. We're going to check out another video clip. This is uh, Miss Danita spending time with her mother-in-law. Now, what we're going to look for in this video clip is how they interact together. We're going to look at what they're doing. We're going to look at what's the vibe that you pick up from this video clip, from the interaction between her, Miss Danita, and the mother-in-law. <laughs> Looks like they were having a great time. If you don't know, Nollywood is a really big thing in Nigeria, and people just sit around and spend hours and hours watching Nollywood movie and Bollywood movies. These movies are drama filled, but these movies talk a lot about witchcraft and black magic and ritual killings. So it looks like they had a good time that weekend. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna look and see what happened next. Where did Miss Danita go on her journey, on her first trip to Nigeria? All right, remember, she went on two trips. So in this video clip, that man introduces himself. He literally takes over her camera, her YouTube video. He takes over, I'm sorry, it's not YouTube, it's Instagram. He takes over her Instagram video. And you guys, he makes a six minute video with him just talking showing you around legos for six minutes now i'm telling you all when an african man takes over your youtube channel or wants to be seen on camera or wants to be heard on camera that's not an african man you want to be bothered with you better run you i'm sure you're saying why kiki why 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 is that a negative well that's a negative in african in our culture no but it's probably not okay because, you know, social media is nothing here. But in Africa, yeah, social media is a big deal. African people are extreme. West African people are extremely private. They don't like their business on social media. They don't like taking pictures and they sure don't like taking videos. Because another thing they believe is that someone can put a spell on you with your picture or with your video. So they don't do that. They don't put themselves out there like that because they don't want their business out there like that. And another thing they think is that when you constantly put yourself and your life in front of a camera, that you're going to create jealousy. They don't want to create jealousy. True Africans do not want to create jealousy in anyone's heart. All right. So that's why I say you better be careful when you meet a West African man who wants to be on the camera and who wants to be heard on the videos. That is not the West African man you want to be bothered with. All right, so let's check out this video and y'all tell me what y'all think about that. We are back again. This is your boy, Abaneni Obojememe, AKA Big Daddy. As you can see, we're back and we're on the island. So we're heading towards the, um, the registry, somewhere on uh, King's River Road in Ikoyi. So this is Victoria Island, Ikoyi, that's Kata Bridge, you know. So when you hear about Lagos, Nigeria, you hear about the island, the island, the island, Lagos Island, Lagos Island. This is Lagos Island, okay? 
And just like we all know what the word means, Lagos is a Portuguese word which means lagoons, group of lakes. Right now in this video clip, we find Miss Danita still, no, she's in Ogon State, all right? And listen to when, how she describes the relationship in this video. She doesn't describe him as her husband. She says that they're getting married, okay? She talks about them getting married, and she talks about how you should believe in love. Now, what stood out other than that, this is what stood out to me in this video. All right. Um, well, I was at the university. I studied religions, and you also study different belief systems while you study religion. So witchcraft and um, voodoo and black magic are one of the belief systems that we actually study. Okay. So... In this belief system, there is a spell that they call a bonding spell. And in this bonding spell, what they do is that person binds you to him. All right. Which means you think you can't be anything without this person. You think that this person is the end all be all. And if you lose this person, you'll never find love again, that you were nothing without this person and that you'll be nothing without this person and that you just cannot survive in this world without this person. This was the vibe that I was getting from Miss Danita in this video. And what kept coming to my mind was this sounds like a binding spell. I'm not saying that this is what happened to her. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just telling you what I think. I'm just giving you my opinion, what I see and what I think. All right. So here's the video kit clip. You tell me in the comment section what you see and what you think. It's like 10 or 11 here in Nigeria, which means most people in the United States are still asleep. Um, so when you wake up, good morning. Um, I'm still here in um, Ogun State, Itoria Wakoro, um, with my love, waiting to, you know, get married and start our life together. And it's just been such a phenomenal, phenomenal experience being loved and, you know, having someone who pushes you towards greatness, you know. I have never been a good self-motivator. I've never been, unless there's a, unless there's a catalyst. Um, and just to finally have somebody who sees me in a way that I don't see myself sometimes, who encourages me to be my best self, who demands excellence from me um, in a good way, in a loving way, is just one of the most astounding feelings I've ever had. Um, and I don't think I ever would have known what this feeling was if I didn't take a leap of faith to just say, I'm gonna give this thing one more try. I'm gonna try love one more time. Um, you know, the whole idea, concept of coming to freaking Africa in the middle of a pandemic, you know, the, the loopholes and the things that I went through to get here. Um, you know, again, it's, it's crazy stuff. When I, I'm telling you, when I write my book, you'll see how nuts it is. But, but, but it was all ordained, you know, all this stuff Sometimes our leaps of faith are the things that take us to those places that we had we always thought we could go, but we had no idea how. And then sometimes you just gotta do something crazy. You know, I'm not saying like bad crazy, but sometimes it means I'm gonna take a chance on this love across the across the world and see if this is the one that God created for me. And sometimes you're right, and you know the the reality is it could have been wrong, but I took a leap and I I, I tried it. Um, and I'm grateful that I tried it. And so I'm looking forward to when I come home, continuing to leap um, as I wait for my husband to get to get there with me and, you know, to start our family and to really, really move in God's purpose. I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful today. Um, I'm grateful that God trusts me the way he does. I'm grateful that he, he bound, he bound my wounds, if you will. He, he is the bomb to my soul. and. Because of that trust, you know, I have my life partner now. And um, I'm trying not to get emotional talking about it, but just when you have that love, man, that love that just hits different, that doesn't hurt anymore, that doesn't make you question yourself, that love that affirms, you know, that first Corinthians love, man, it just hits different. Um, and I'm just so grateful to experience love as it was intended, the way. 
Now the thing that stood out to me in this video was a number of things, but another thing that really truly stood out is when she was talking about the love uh, in Corinthians. That this love that this man has for her and they have for each other is this um, love in Corinthians. The love that is in Corinthians is not romantic love. This is unconditional love. All right. She did not describe this man as patient, as kind. She didn't say any of those things about him. So if you're not patient and if you're not kind and if you're not humble, this is not unconditional love. This is not the love that's in Corinthians. Most romantic love is not about being patient, kind, and humble. It's about getting what I want from another person, just in my own humble opinion. Now, the next time we see the couple is the night before their wedding on September the 9th, 2020. They're just standing around and he's joking for the camera, making jest for the camera. That's what they would call it in Nigeria. But remember what I told you about an African man who always wants to be on the camera. All right, let's check out this video, y'all. <laughs> so the next time we see Miss Danita is on September the 10th. This is her wedding day. This is what she posted on September the 10th, 2020 on her timeline on Instagram. Just this one single picture. Now I found this to be extremely strange because Miss Danita talked about this wedding. You guys see how much footage I have from her talking about this wedding. I mean, she was posting five and six times a day talking about this wedding, hyping up this wedding, you know, just this was everything to her. But then the day of the wedding, all you post is one picture and say, I got married. That's it. That's all. This is when I thought something very strange is going on. So we don't hear from Miss Danita again, you guys, until December. This picture was posted in December, I think December 26th, the day after Christmas, 2020. And remember, this is an old set of pictures. We saw this set of pictures way back when she first went to Nigeria and they took pictures then. So this is an old set of pictures that she posted. So. Remember, they got married in October. We don't see anything or hear anything else from her on Instagram until December. And it's a picture that she posted a long time ago. Something is definitely going on with Miss Danita. So, on my next video, we're going to see what happened in 2021 when she returned from Nigeria.